Hi guys, um, we are going to finish off the 2019 2.6 chemical reactivities um, examination paper by finishing question 3 today. So let's get started. Now question 3 normally looks at the acids and bases component. Um, so let's have a look at these. So explain when the so nitric acid and ethanoic acid are both acid and you need to show you equa draw equations to show the type of um, reactions when they react with water so the three acids that you remember remember from year th um, year 11 is hno3 hcl and h2so4 oops these are your um, strong acids so that means that when they react with water they completely dissociate and then you form the conjugate base and then hydronium ion. So what does it mean to be an acid is that you donate, um, oops, that means you donate an H. So this H plus has been donated from the HNO3 to H2O. And then the H is left, uh, the H, uh, H plus ion has left. So we have NO3 minus left. And then the H plus has gone to water, which forms H3O plus. Now, the only thing that's different with the ethanoic acid it is an organic acid like you should remember this from organic so what happens is that the um, the negative the positive h plus ions would do the same thing as we saw previously but the key thing here is that this is a equilibrium because it is a um, weak acid it partially dissociate okay so why these acids because they um, dissociate water they produce H3 plus uh, H3 um, H3 plus ions because the hydronium ions are in greater concentration the pH will be below seven hence it will be a acid okay so be an acid will be quite um, this is quite straightforward I hope um, but just remember this is one is completely dissociate one is weakly dis uh, partially dissociate next one calculations fun fun fun. Um, calculate the pH so remember um, the two equations you need guys you need to know that the pH equals negative log H3O plus ions and then if you know the H3O plus ions if you know that concentration this is 10 to the power of negative pH and then Kw equals 1 times 10 to the power of negative 14 this constant is given to you and how can we figure out Kw? Kw it is the multiple of the hydroxyl ion and then the hydronium ion Okay, so calculate the pH. So let's come back to the question. So the HCO, H3O plus concentration is 0 0.0164. Calculate the pH and OH minus. So this is really easy. Just substitute numbers into the equation. We know the H3O plus ions. How do we figure out the pH? So literally just go negative log 0 0.0164 and then you get 1.79. Please don't put a unit for your pH. Now, how do we figure out the OH minus concentration? Well, Kw equals H3O plus multiplied by OH minus. But we already know this number, which is 1 times 10 to the power negative 14. We already know this number, which is 0 0.0164. We just need to rearrange this. Well, you can just copy the numbers down as you saw, as you see them. 0.0164 times OH minus, which we don't know. So the OH minus concentration, it is going to be 1 times 10 to the power negative 14 divided by 0 0.0164. And that's going to give us 6.10 times 10 to the, that's an O by the way, just make sure. Because I don't um, put answers for calculation because I normally just work it out for you. And make sure we put a unit here. 3SF, 3SF appropriate unit okay now calculate the hydroxide concentration when the pH is 9.4 now there are two methods of doing this um, I'll show you both um, because some people prefer one over the other I definitely have a preference I'll show you the one that I don't personally prefer okay um, because, but this you know this works quite well with these three sorry with these four equations that we did over here so it does work quite well so one pH equals 9.4 so straight away if you know the pH we know the H3O plus ion 10 to the power of negative pH which is 10.9 uh, negative um, 
um, 9.4 and that will give me 3.98 times 10 to the power of negative 10 moles per liter and that's h through a plus and i know oh minus sign is going to be kw divided by h through a plus how do i do that because just just rearrange the equation which is just going to be 1 times 10 to the power negative 14 divided by 3.98 times 10 to the power negative 10 and you should get 2.51 times 10 to the power of negative 5 moles per liter now there is another method that I personally do prefer and you won't be marked around using this. This is method number one, method number two. Um, because you're dealing with a base, all right, if you're dealing with a base, now you have pH. pH is the potential of hydronium ions. So this is a potential of H plus ions. And then we don't have to use pH. We can use what we call POH. Not sure if your teacher taught you this. Your pH plus POH, these two numbers added together is your scale of 14. So if you know pH equals 9.4, you know POH is 14 minus 9.4, which is going to be um, 4.6. So this is your POH. This is your potential of hydronium ion. Because this, if you look at these equations that we did up here, you know how pH equals negative log uh, which my, uh, H through a plus, POH is just negative log OH minus. That's a potential of hydronium. This is potential of, uh, sorry, this is potential of hydroxide. This is potential of hydronium. How do I figure out POH? You just negative log OH minus. How do I figure out OH minus? You just 10 to the power of negative POH. So if you grew 10 to the power of negative 4.6, you get 2.51 times 10 to the power of negative 5 moles per liter, which is going to be your OH minus concentration. Okay, so if you, depends on, I normally teach both methods, but um, either one give you the correct answer. Um, if you don't understand this POH stuff, you don't have to do it. Um, don't add more stress. You will get it correct by using this, this method on the left hand side. The only reason I don't like it because I hate typing in all of these numbers in your calculator because the more numbers you type in the calculator, the more likely you are going to make a mistake. Okay, so we're just going to move on. Next one. Okay, so this is the last part of the exam, I believe. Um, nope, oh, we still have one question underneath. All right, so let's have a look. The solutions we have A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. We know that one is HCl, one is NH4Cl, one is NaOH, one is NaCl. So, first thing first, let's just be, without even looking at the question, this is a strong acid. HCl is a strong acid that is your pH 1. Straight away, without even looking at the question okay let's just get rid of that make it look prettier this is going to be hcl ammonium chloride let's do that later naoh from e11 you should know that this is a strong base that goes here nacl is a salt solution ph7 that make that leaves nh4cl right here oh i did it already so this is nh4cl b is hcl c is nacl and then this is sodium hydroxide just by looking at the pHs all right and then if you have people ask me how do you know well HCl is a strong acid pH 1 anything hydroxide is a strong base not necessarily true all the time but it's true in year 12 and year 13 NCA anyway so that's year th uh, that's 13 sodium table salt pH 7 and H4Cl it's a it's the last one out but we will justify it by looking at it later um, so justify your choice by comparing the relative amount of hydronium ion concentration relating to the you know how do we determine it because because the concentration are all the same it's all 0.1 so how do they have different pHs so I'm just gonna quickly go through them so let's do let's start with the most obvious one let's start with HCl HCl is a strong acid therefore it completely dissociate and the H is transferred um, so let's get rid of the H here and just write it how you can see it this is oops this is Cl minus and H3O plus. Because this is completely dissociated, you have a very, very large, a very large concentration of H3O plus. That means the larger this you have, the lower the pH. 
stronger get the stronger the acid the larger the concentration of these hydronium ion and the lower the ph so that's really straightforward and then for c you know let's do d so this is b let's do the obvious ones first d d is sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide completely dissociate into na plus and oh minus and they talk about the relative amount of concentration of hydronium ion well i have very large concentration of oh minus what does that mean that means i have very little very few concentration of hydronium ion that's why the ph is very high high ph because this is a strong base now if i do nacl NaCl, if I put it in water, it just splits into Na plus and Cl minus. None of these will dissociate. None of them do anything with the water. There's equal concentration. There's equal concentration of H3O plus and OH minus concentration. That's why pH is at 7. And then if you look at the last one, the last one is the most important one. We'll do it here. This is a two-parter. So first thing first, you always try to dissolve it in water. So just split the two things into the ions. That's dissolving, okay? The Cl- doesn't do anything, but your NH4+, plus, if you have been grinding through the old exam papers, you will know that ammonia, which is NH3, is a very common weak base that you get. And when ammonia gains another H, it becomes NH4+. Plus. So they go back and forth. Okay, so what you have here is that the NH4 plus is a weak acid. It will partially dissociate, give you some NH3 and give you some H3O plus. So you have your H3O plus concentration is going to be higher than your OH minus. But then this, NH, this H3O plus, I'll just highlight it, this concentration compared to this concentration is much less. Okay, so this concentration is not as high it's not as great and it's not as high as HCl why is that because this is a partial dissociation this is a weak acid it partially dissociate therefore the pH is 5.62 okay so if we look at more detailed explanation now I'll remember remind myself I didn't because um, the equilibrium Thing when I copy paste it doesn't work quite well so that's just a reminder for myself I have to insert it here so if you want to refer to the answers this is what you should look at okay so pH reflects the con reflects the concentration of the H through a plus the higher the pH the lower the H through a plus size so look at a um, ammonium chloride first of all it fully dissociate dis dissolves or dissociate into the ions but then NH4 plus partially dissociated in water you have produced a certain amount of h3o plus so it's a eight so it's a weak acid and the ph doesn't equal um so a is nh4cl and then b as a strong acid so this is b hcl completely dissociate so you have a high concentration therefore pH equals negative log H3 plus. So what that means, that section means if you actually substitute this, like say pH, if you go back to the question, you find H3 plus concentration equals 0 0.1, the concentration of HCl equals 0 0.1. If you negative log 0 0.1, you get 1, and then pH equals 1. And then if you actually go back, you can see that the pH is actually 1. I don't really like this part because this is um, not a very good explanation to do um, as a basis for year 12 anyway because this is like that calculation is not very good in year 12 that's a year 13 calculation but um, you know you get the idea you, you, you have to learn to the equations anyway so make sure you understand that this will dissociate completely dissociate in water give away the H plus ions and form the conjugate base of Cl minus and high concentration of h3o plus okay now c is an acl it's neutral it completely dissolves dissolves in water so you so you same equations have, as i did up there you make na plus cl minus neither will react with water so the h3o plus remains the same as oh minus so ph is seven that's what you did in year, year, um, year 11 and um, the sodium hydroxide is a strong base completely dissociate producing high OH minus low H3 plus hence you have a high pH okay very similar to what I did up here but um, just make sure you understand this process is the, 
the dissociation the equations that's um, quite tricky All right last one El elaborate on the electrical conductivity of the force solution oh my god okay so this is very few words but this is a lot of writing so how do we how does something conduct electricity electrical conductivity depends on the concentration of charged particles so it's a number of charged particles that you have so it depends on the concentration of free moving ions so if we go from a b c d if we look at the equations that we did up here sorry i'm just gonna come back here so what are the equations looking at? So we, what, sorry, what are the reactions looking at? We are trying to look at the product side. We're trying to look at how much is there a high concentration of free moving ions. So let's look at B first. B is a strong acid. Um, it completely dissociates. So at the end of the reaction, you don't have any of these left. That's completely dissociated. And then um, what happens is that the Cl minus um, you have a large amount of this, you have a large amount of that, therefore you have a high concentration of free moving ions, that's a good conductor. Same with D, when it dissociates, you have a high concentration of Na+, high concentration of OH-. How can I tell? Because this is all single error. Look at that, this is a single error, this is a single error, that means you don't have any of these left. They all turn into the free moving ions, they can carry charges. Even with NaCl, if you dissolve NaCl in water, you, dissolve, you dissociate them into the ions, look at those ions, they're all charge carriers, and this is a single error, you have lots and lots of free moving ions. Even for D, the first part, it this partially it completely dissolves you have a large concentration NH4 plus you have a large concentration of Cl minus which can all carry charges okay so if we look at these so these kind of summarize it really well we are uh, we require free moving ions electrons to conduct electricity they're all good conductors because they completely dissociate and they're releasing a large concentration of ions which can carry charges Okay, I believe that's the end of the examination um, paper. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. But I feel that with um, chemical reactivity, I think um, equilibrium and acids and bases are something that people definitely struggle with the most. Um, so if you have any questions, please um, leave, leave them in the comment section. Um, smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.